Hi guys, welcome back to channel. Today we are diving into one of the most impactful areas for sourcing managers. How to master procurement analysis in Excel. If you manage suppliers, contracts or sourcing strategies, this tutorial will give you practical tools to make better decision and prove the value. So today we are going to discuss first how to create this type of dashboard or what exactly available in this dashboard. Then we will check what is the input data required in order to create such dashboard. What are the key KPIs which we are using in order to create this kind of insight. Then the computation and following by the pivot by which I am able to create this dynamic dashboard. So let's start with the dashboard. So this is an actionable dashboard where user can check and analyze where the things are going wrong what the current situation is and is there any need to create or take any action or change in strategy. So this dashboard talk about the overall cost saving. I will be talking about how you calculate the cost saving. So there are certain baseline cost which you have in your service level agreements with the supplier and but then you again negotiate on the deals and various promotions so you get a better deal so there are certain budgeted cost and then the actual cost so you get certain cost saving and uh, here we are showing that what are my top five supplier by which i'm saving my cost the same way in the cards i am showing the what is my total spend and this is spent uh usually people check this against the budget then out of my supplier how much percentage i am allocating uh, to the given supplier. So this is very much required in order to remove the over reliance on a particular supplier. So it should be, you know, well distributed. Uh, then the second card is your on time in full. So which is very low here and it is a very, it's a very key KPI in order to estimate that if I am getting 100% on time in full, mm -hmm. then I can ensure my production is going to be smoother. Otherwise, sometime you will be less on the quantity or sometime you will be late with the full quantity. So it is going to impact your production scheduling. Then comes the defect rate. So it's not only that supplier is giving to you and you are accepting it. You do a quality control or quality checks. And if in the quality checks, the consignment or the delivery, if it didn't pass that uh, quality check, you reject the delivery, correct? We count it as a defect order and we want to check that okay uh, how much order we are getting as a defected order so that uh, uh, you know you will be having a check that whether you will be able to support your production plan or not again this is an order delay so on an average how much delay you are expecting from a supplier or overall overall supplier so that you can keep your strategy that okay uh, keeping these days as a tolerance and or you will be able to release your orders on time now we have this spend by category so you also want to check that which kind of items you are spending on and uh, here you can also check that what are your high value items and what are your low value items then we have certain trends so why the trends are important trends are important because you need to check that as per your budgeted timeline how much you have spent and what was the distribution? Are you spending on the seasonal days or how you are spending on the non-seasonal days? And the same way you will also analyze that, okay, on which month you were uh, getting more delays in order to receive your uh, raw materials or any uh, of your procurement deliveries. This is very critical in order because you want to get your procurement deliveries on time in order to run your plant or your factory smoothly. If there is a delay in the raw material, the everything else is going to be impacted. So you want to control this number as well. Then there is order defect. In the order defect, we check that, okay, how much good quality material you receive. If you are not going to receive a material which is not passing the quality checks, then it is as good as not received. So, you also need to control these kind of uh, numbers. So the tracking is important so that you can communicate uh, the analytics to the supplier that this is your performance and uh, that is why, you know, we should not buy from you or we are looking for some other supplier or you can ask for them that, okay, you can, you should increase your performance. 
anyway so moving ahead this list of the delayed order okay so if you want to analyze what are the high cost orders so this table is uh, uh, sorted by the total cost so it is uh, showing that what are the top high uh, cost order which got delayed in the selected time frame then you can check that what's the PU number for them and which supplier it was, what was the item. So that user can take action that, okay, this was a high value item and still it was delayed for five days. Okay. So this is a area of concern and where we should act as well. So this is how you will check uh, this dash and can take actions. Moving ahead, the input data. So in order to create this kind of uh, dashboard, you require some data correct and uh, as per my knowledge in my experience i have uh, worked with various uh, erp systems and this is the best available data in terms of all the uh, spend management tool or the procurement management tool or any you know procurement planning tool as well so yeah what are the key columns you get as a data point to do the analytics so Obviously, if the PO number, then you should have the supply name and then um, which category it falls, what are the items and by which uh, trans mode uh, that uh, procurement order is coming, either rail, road or ship, uh, which location the supplier need to deliver and then what was the unit price, then how much quantity we have ordered and how much quantity the supplier delivered. So usually uh, both of them can have some difference as uh, again the lot size, pallet capacity, container capacity, uh, you know, there's various issues, correct? So it cannot be the same as the order quantity. Sometimes it is higher, sometimes it is lower. Uh, then when you are doing uh, an agreement with a supplier, you will be having certain baseline price. But when you actually buying it, okay, so sometimes supplier offer you a competitive price so that you should not move to another supplier okay and sometimes you are at a position where you can negotiate because the order is so high so you can negotiate the price as well so in that case uh, the actual price may uh, get lower as well so here here the negotiation strategy take place which saves you money then there's a currency then what is the total cost generally this is your uh, baseline price multiply by your order quantity and then what was the order date and what was the expected delivery date so they are something uh, there is something called lead time so this is generally the difference between the order date and the expected delivery date but due to a uh, real world constraint the actual delivery date can be uh, early or it can be way after the expected delivery date expected delivery date is very much important in order to ensure your production planning and each of your planning system work on this date so yeah uh, so adhering to this date uh, is very crucial uh, this lead time is a standard lead time which you have modeled for yourself and then there is a quality status whether whatever supplier has delivered is that uh, quality checked or not if yes then it is pass and uh, if no then it's fail and then you have order status whether it is whether this order is still open or it is closed now let us discuss the what are the key kpis which we should calculate and what are the formula for them okay so the first kpi is the supplier spend and the supplier spend is the total amount of money spent on goods or service with the supplier during a specific period, it helps identifying high value supplier and support spend analysis for negotiation and sourcing strategy. And it is simple, uh, just calculate how much you have spent for a supplier for multiple deliveries against various items. The second thing is OTIF and it is a percentage of orders delivered by supplier on or before the expected delivery date and in the correct quantity. So basically it is talking about in full and on time it reflects supplies reliability and performance so how to calculate it we need to check that how many orders were delivered on time and in full and then we need to divide that number with the total number of order which were assigned to that supplier and then uh, we need to get the percentage of that number and this is 
your OT for that supplier. Yeah, the third thing is average saving percentage. So this average percentage of cost saving achieved through procurement initiatives such as negotiation, supplier consolidation or alternate sourcing. It shows the financial effectiveness of sourcing decision. So as I was talking about, there are something called baseline cost. So baseline cost is coming from your annual operating plan or your budgeting, financial budgeting. So you have that okay for a particular procurement, I will I can spend this much of cost, uh, but how much cost I'm actually doing by various sourcing strategies, negotiations and all, and how much percentage I am saving. So you can calculate your average saving. Now come to the defect rate and it's a crucial one where we need to check the percentage of received goods or service that fail to meet quality standard. It highlights supplier quality issue and potential risk in the supplier base. So how to calculate it? There's a number of defective orders divided by total order received multiplied by 100. And I think it is very straightforward. Now the average order delays is again the average number of days by which supplier deliveries are late. Compared to the expected delivery date, it measures supplier timeliness and impacts supply chain reliability. How to calculate it? So it is uh, easy you just need to check that what's the actual delivery date and uh, you need to subtract it with the expected delivery date where you are getting the positive values you can check out that okay here my order got delay and this is the average of all the late deliveries now coming to the computation part so in order to support uh, my calculation i created uh, various uh, calculation which are highlighted in the blue uh, columns blue headers uh, one is this lead time, then on time delivery, then in full and OTIF and various other things like variance and uh, delays, defect and no defect, this kind of stuff. Now moving to the pivot. So in order to support uh, these kind of uh, KPIs and those chart, I have created multiple uh, pivots and in each of the pivot, what I did, I am just checking that, okay, what are my uh supplier spend or my otf against the supplier then what are my cost saving against the uh, category and against the supplier same way what's the average order delay what's the defect rate what's the cost trend and order delay trend and order defect trend and these kind of stuff i am calculating and it's a very very uh you know regular way of doing it is a simple uh pivot which i have used now moving now moving to the dashboard so by using these pivot, you can easily create this kind of chart. As you know that these are the simple pie charts and the donut chart and the bar chart, which I have used here. So you need to use slicer as a filter. So where as you select any uh, supplier, any category, you can see that everything is changing. So, so it's a dynamic dashboard. You can select your filters and it will change the values accordingly. So if you like this dashboard, I am attaching a link uh to get this uh dashboard and uh, if you want these kind of uh, videos more then please comment me the topics on which you want to videos and uh, i will try to create and accommodate them and till then please like share and subscribe thank you for watching